This is Captain Rob Dolby. And I'm Captain Heather Dolby. And we have the privilege to serve in the United States Southern Territorial Headquarters as Territorial Mission Specialists. With the Salvation Army um, here in the United States. So Luke chapter 10, we get to this point where Jesus is in this beautiful uh, narrative place and he's weaving together all these stories. And of course, we know the story of the Good Samaritan. We've heard it in Sunday school on the felt board many times. And uh, for me, as we begin to talk about the least of these, this is a critical point uh, in the gospel to just understand. Uh, you know, so often we want to serve God, understand what our calling is. And uh, I love it that the gospel just gives us just this practical walking out of love. That's right. Embodied love, you know, being the hands and feet of Jesus. And in this story for me, uh, it speaks of posture. So we get the story, right? So this guy gets beaten really bad. And as he's laying there, literally uh, beaten so bad that he's dying, he's unrecognizable. Uh, all these guys start to walk by, and we know the first one is a religious leader, Pharisee, uh, priest. And as he walks by, he sees. He sees and just immediately crosses the street, and he's, he's out of there. Second guy comes along, which is not just the priest, but kind of the worship leader, the assistant, uh, assistant leader in the temple. And he sees, but he doesn't only see, and right away across the street, it says that he stops, he sees, and he kind of checks out the scene. He looks a little bit deeper, and he sees the, the blood and, and the guts and the gore, and uh, then he chooses to move on. Then the third person comes. That's the Samaritan, and the Samaritan sees. He also stops to look and checks it out, but then the scripture says he's moved with compassion. He sees, and he's moved with compassion. So for me, this just speaks of posture, where uh, all three of these guys see this person in this horrible state, this brokenness, this person that's literally just been uh, abused and beaten and is laying there dying. They all have eyes to see, but they all see in three different ways. Hmm, the first guy good. that sees just immediately moves on, really doesn't feel anything at all. Second guy sees, and he, he looks a little bit deeper. He kind of checks it out. Uh, but then the third guy, the Samaritan, sees and immediately is moved with compassion. So for me, it doesn't start at the moment. I think we can think sometimes that it's in the moment when we see the person, but I believe we can actually, uh, because of our relationship with Christ, because of that daily living in Him and uh, being those hands and feet, it's actually a posture that we get to choose uh, as we build that relationship with Him, that we can live in that posture when we see that brokenness uh, immediately it's almost like it's too late. What I mean when I say that is, you know, we're going to see these kind of issues out in the world, whether that's at work, whether that's at church, whether that's wherever we kind of are uh, in our journeys. But we're going to see situations of brokenness. And, I, I, you know, I think the beginning of how we respond doesn't start in that moment, but actually starts with Jesus before that. So we can uh, know Jesus so well and know the Holy Spirit so well that we know that we're ready so that when we do see these situations with brokenness, that uh, we have the response that is a Christ-like response, which is... I really love that. Um, as you're talking, I'm thinking about how um, as we're following Jesus and when we experience this newness of life, like we have this great desire to um, bring salvation to the world, but we want people to escape pain and escape suffering. And so this idea of how can I prevent pain and suffering in the world, but in the parable that Jesus tells here, like the Samaritan did not prevent suffering. He couldn't intervene and um, he was, didn't arrive at the point in the man's story where he was getting beat up and be like, hey man, back off, that's my friend. And the man ran away. No, he came after the fact. And so there are times when um, in our journey, as we go about our day-to-day -day life, like we encounter people who something's already happened and we can't do anything about that. That's a hard thing because we want to prevent so much, right? We want to preserve like this purity of life and we want people to have happiness um, and we don't want bad things to happen to people. Um, but in this scenario, the beauty is entering into his neighbor's story. Right. And also, you know, what I'm thinking as you say that is we often see ourselves as one of those three guys that responded, but maybe sometimes we can actually identify with the person that's been yes. broken. Yes, yes, because in this story, which uh, I know we're going to talk about this in later episodes, but in this story, it doesn't come up 
what the guy was doing when he got beat. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Like, did he deserve it? Did he not? Like, um, did was someone just stealing back stuff he had stolen? Like, we don't even know his story. Because mm-hmm. actually, um, this idea of what must I do to inherit eternal life, which was how it all began with the um, expert in the law saying to Jesus, hey, like, what do I do? you know, to experience this heaven on earth, you know, this eternal life. And it comes down to loving my neighbor, entering into their story. It comes down to um, not having to wrestle with, do they deserve this grace? Do they deserve this, um, me pouring out my life and my resources and my time on their behalf? Because the Samaritan, he was on his way somewhere, I am sure, because people didn't just wander around. Like they were purposeful, they had places to go. And he took his time aside from his business he gave his money to the innkeeper, right? He stayed with the man and entered in. Like, we don't know who was waiting for him at home. Maybe it was a hot meal and his wife and kids. We don't even know. But he chose to give that away and put that aside for the sake of his neighbor. And entering into that story, it cost him something. Right. But that's how we can maybe experience part of heaven on earth is to come close to one another, even in times of suffering. Right. And I guess this idea of help me see, uh, I want to share a story, which is uh, Quita's story. And that's a story that's personal uh, for us. And I think it's, remember, right. it's important to remember uh, in that posture uh, as we serve, we, we run into people whose story changes everything mm-hmm. for us. And I love that Jesus weaves us into uh, the story of others. So our help me see is our prayer as we reflect on the Good Samaritan. And Quida was a young lady, probably about 11 or 12 years old when we first met her in a tough neighborhood in Charlotte, North Carolina. And Quida was one of the smartest kids, just one of those so kids smart. when you meet her. I mean, you just you just hear her for like five minutes and you're like, this girl's going to change the world. That's there's right. just something on her life where you're just like, there's something here and, and, and it's good. It's amazing. Uh, Quida's issue uh, was that she couldn't see. She wasn't blind, but literally uh, Quida didn't have glasses. And Quida just struggled to do well in school because she couldn't see the board at the front. She couldn't uh, read these books that she could, uh, she loved the story in them. And so we were able to work with Quida's public school and talk with the school nurse. And guess what? They had some funds available uh, to help her get some classes. That's right. And I love that story, right? Because um, as Jesus encounters people like the blind see, And um, I know that she wasn't 100% blind, but like this idea of, you know, not only did we enter into her story, she entered into ours. And so because we were able to see her need, um, we were able to advocate on her behalf with the resources that we had access to, to get her those glasses, which changed everything for her. And when she put them on for the first time, she got to go pick them out herself, which was a big deal. She put them on for the first time, her face lit up. She began to write, she wrote spoken words, she wrote poetry that she would share in the congregation. And, uh, and it was amazing. It was such an amazing moment until, until the next thing happened. Right. So I remember that day where Quita kind of came back to the after school program and she just had this kind of disparaging look yeah. on her face. Uh, she really just looked like something had gone really wrong. And of course, you notice right away that Quita didn't have her glasses on. And, uh, you know, we were kind of trying to be gentle with her. Hey, Quita, how, how are you doing? And what happened with your glasses? And I remember she told us this story where uh, she was so proud to go home and show her mom and show her all these books that she was reading and how well she was doing in school. And in that moment, her mom had taken her glasses and snapped them in half. And I said, uh, you know, you don't need to be smart like those other kids. Uh, I'm gonna teach you how you keep a man and make some money in this world. You need to forget about those books. That's a hard moment, uh, walking alongside someone. Right, because the truth is, is we couldn't change her story. And because we don't have the power for that, um, there is one that does though, and it's Jesus. And so um, in those moments, choosing to not be like, well, we got you one pair, so sorry your your mom snapped them, but too bad, so sad. Like, I get that, like going back to the school and saying, hey, like, is there a way to get another voucher? And can we make this happen again? And I think like the first moment when she got the first pair of glasses, that was beautiful. Um, But the second pair of glasses that she got, That was a miracle because despite the brokenness in her life, not even the stuff that she was in control of, the stuff that she wasn't even in control of, God still provided.